With your CID TV News update, I'm Donna Bush. Thanks for joining us. Recently, a group of former Caymanian seamen were part of a panel discussion held at the National Gallery. Organized by the National Trust, a lively discussion with panelists, Captain Crosby Ebanks, Dr. Steve McPhail, Mr. Orman, and Mr. Loxley Banks highlighted the influence of the sea on Cayman's culture and heritage. Carrie Bounds of the National Trust tells us how she prepared for the discussion on the Cayman Islands maritime heritage. I decided to Google the words Cayman and the sea and found the following. Caymanians were once renowned as shipbuilders, turtlers and sailors, and their life, whether on sea or land, was marked by resourcefulness and strong communal ties born of hardship and isolation. This then led me to the saying, to know our past is to determine our future. Today, the world's oceans are at the forefront of the news. There's climate change, phenomenal amounts of pollution, loss of species of fish and coral, even the threat of new infrastructure. But despite the negative press, the ocean remains a source of our livelihood, making it crucial that we continue to reminisce and highlight how the sea has helped to shape us as a people, to further impress upon future generations the importance of preservation and sustainability. Each panelist discussed their own personal experiences at sea and how it was part of the livelihood of most Caymanians in various ways. The event was held in the National Gallery's Dart Auditorium as part of the programming for the gallery's current exhibition, Coral Encounters, Photographs from Our Underworld Underwater World. Well, Minister for Health, Environment, Culture and Housing, the Honorable Dwayne Seymour, started the month of June visiting departments with very different remits within his ministry. A GIS press release tells us Minister Seymour and his senior staff visited the National Cultural Foundation and the Mosquito Research and Control Unit in early June. Minister Seymour toured key areas of operations and displays at both headquarters. While visiting the Cayman National Cultural Foundation, the minister learned more about the full extent of CNCF's operations and discussions covered the array of events held at the venue, as well as current and future revenue generation uh, measures including rental of the venue for uh, community events. Other topics included resource needs, as well as the potential for expansion of the more than 30-year-old theater, which currently has a seating capacity of 300. Mr. Seymour expressed particular interest in the climate control storeroom where CNCF keeps his collection of work, works by the late visionary artist Gladwin Bush, or Miss Lassie, as she is known. And then over at the MRCU headquarters, Mr. Seymour first saw the lab where every day two individuals counts, identifies, and records the mosquitoes harvested by the unit's New Jersey light traps at uh, 25 designated points across the Cayman Islands. Now, the minister and his staff then made their way to the operations center from which MRCU deploys the insecticide and larvicide that it uses to control Grand Cayman's mosquito population. Here is where the minister asked questions about the different kinds of equipment that the team employs in different environments. He also told a group of almost two dozen disease prevention officers and other personnel that he was very impressed by what he had learned about their work on the visit. Before in ending his tour, Mr. Seymour noted that the department undertakes a much wider range of operations than most people know and promised to do more to raise awareness. He also promised to be back soon to tour the MRCU's hangar, where the plane and equipment used for aerial spraying operations are kept. Well, residents may have noticed that some police cars now have new emergency sirens. Since the beginning of June, the service has started to transition the emergency lights on all police vehicles to an updated version. The new police emergency lights have been programmed to increase the visibility of police when on patrol. Portions of the lights will remain on permanently when the vehicle is in service, which makes the cars easier to set or uh, to see rather in general. The public will be able to differentiate between regular patrol and other police response as there are several response programs. When a regular patrol, a steady light is visible on each end of the light bar. When the vehicle is not moving but engaged in police response, for example, at the scene of collision or roadblock, the lights will be flashing. The lights can also be used to direct traffic as they have directional flow. And when the vehicle is engaged in emergency response, the lights flash more rapidly. Feedback about the new lighting on police vehicles can be shared at rcips.gov, or .ky rather, that's rcips.ky. Then click on the no, How Do I icon and then Community Feedback to the RCIPS. Well, finally, for a look at our weekly schedule of shows here on CIG Television, you can go online to gis.gov.ky and press on the publications icon at the bottom of the home page. 
If you missed today's news update, you can go on the Cayman Islands government Facebook page as well as the CIG television YouTube channel. With your CIG television news update, I'm Donna Bush as always thanking you for joining us, hoping you'll do the same again tomorrow. Until then, have a safe and wonderful night. I'll see you back here again tomorrow.